welcome into Just a Tip, a fantasy football podcast. It is running late for us right now than what we usually do. Thank you for staying up, guys. We got, uh, let's see, Regan. How you doing, man? Ozer Bear. Moving's uh, proceeding and having fun with the uh, movement of the NFL today. How about yourself, buddy? How you uh, how you holding up? You look uh, beat up. Uh, yeah, we had a uh, we had a scrimmage to coach today, so that was that was fun. So running late, but yeah, been uh, running all day. Well, not literally. So yeah, I don't run. run too much anymore. <laughs> we got a lot of us. <laughs> Ryan the Tagless Haynes. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, a okay. lot of a lot of sudden news today that we uh, that we got. So I'm excited to get into it. All right, man. We got Kyle behind the screen with us, uh, setting us up here. And I am Mac Disfatbidge. Uh, and we are your tippers. And we got, let's see, August 20. What is today? August 31st. Jeez. Nine days away from NFL kickoff on a Thursday night. That's almost two weeks to slow the, I mean, uh, sorry, almost two weeks to Sunday night football uh, for the weekend after. And then we have football every weekend until February. So we made it, guys. We're, we're pretty Beautiful. much there, <laughs> the home stretch. But yeah, as you alluded to, uh, Ryan, we got a big day in the NFL world today. Uh, a lot of impact on the fantasy world as well. So basically, this episode, we're just going to be getting into a giant pair of briefs. Uh, all tagless, of course. Uh, Ryan's going to share them with us, and uh, we'll go around uh, talking about some headlines. Uh, you guys have probably already heard the biggest headline of today, but uh, we'll break it down for you. Then we're going to give some reflection on our own fantasy drafts. I think we all done. Anybody have any more drafts? Or are we good? Regan, you have one Follow more? Him. While I'm on vacation, I haven't told While her you're that. on vacation, don't her. yeah, don't tell her. <laughs> She's not listening, so we're good. Just go to the uh, bathroom. Just say yeah, you got something going I, on. And... Oh man, yeah, I gotta, I gotta Kyle's take cover a few for minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll get into that. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all you takers out there uh, supporting our podcast. We started this back on St. Patrick's Day. It's been a lot of fun. I uh, really enjoy. Uh, getting on here with you guys. Uh, it's been a, quite the journey. We are, we're we're close to a thousand downloads now, and this is episode 26. So uh, stuff's getting real. Got the website now, just the tip, ffp.com, where you can check out our rankings. You can follow our socials at just the tip, ffp. And then find us on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, just give us a follow, subscribe, like, and all that all that junk uh and one more order of business all right we got new merch if you didn't hear our last episodes uh we got these hats um uh, we got koozies i don't know if anybody has any koozies they've been selling like hot cakes i've never had a hot cake but i guess they sell out pretty and i never get there in time so hey that's the I problem that's they're why. never around <laughs> I, I never see them i don't think anybody's ever seen them they're always gone uh yeah but lakeshore ri designs lakeshore is one word they make the hats and koozies go check them out on facebook and uh instagram got some uh home decor you want to get up uh we got halloween coming up i'm sure she could do anything you need uh really heavy into the custom so man that was a lot i was talking way too long <laughs> oh thank god you finished i was dying yeah, uh, I know. I know. I need some water <laughs> after that. So with that, let's get into, uh, we'll call it Haynes' Briefs. It won't be too brief, but it is news. Tell me something good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Ryan. Tell me something good. Well, fellas, I'm excited to, to share these briefs with you. I'm always I'm always glad for a little, uh, excited for a little group brief play so mm, let's do tell it tell me how you really feel <laughs> <laughs> all right so biggest news of the day obviously uh i was wrong i was wrong i thought cam newton was going to be the starter i thought he was going to be a starter for for a while this season if not the whole season 
And today, Cam Newton was released from the Patriots. Totally blindsided me. But, uh... No, you know. God! No, God, please, no! 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 Do you have the opposite reaction? Can you play that for me? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> But I, uh, I'll define it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you guys, <laughs> you, you got to admit when you're wrong, I was wrong. Cam Newton will not be the starter for the Patriots to open up the season uh, or ever again. So just what are, what are your thoughts? Reeks? I'm going to send this to you for obvious reasons. What are you thinking? Well, honestly, I would not say call it quits for Cam being in New England. You never know with them bringing him back later on if something was ever to happen. I don't think Cam's going to get signed by anybody. That's my just my opinion. Uh, we can get into that a little bit more later on, but um, oh, get into it now. Get into it now. Well, that's the case. You don't the think only, he's going anywhere? The only place that he uh, seems to be interested was Dallas, obviously, and I think uh, there's a little bit of concerns with Dak and his shoulder injury after his ankle injury, and will he be there full time this year? And Cam could be a good fill in for that. That being said, I don't know if he'll go there. So if he doesn't get picked up, I could easily see uh, him get picked up uh, from the Pats again. And the other note note that I'll jump on Ryan's toes is Brian Hoyer also got released from the Patriots today. So now they're rocking one. What is this? <laughs> it's hang, literally... hang on. Bre- breaking news. Patriots also cut uh, Mac Jones and Jarrett Stidham. And uh, <laughs> Bill Belichick will be playing quarterback for the Patriots. Oh, can't win without him. Do you so? Love it. Oh, oh. Mac, I, how are you feeling about it? Uh, I like being right. Uh, I said they got to have, they got to start uh, McCorkle here. I, did, I didn't, I thought Cam Newton was going to start week one. I did. I, I, you start him in every preseason game. You have him run with the ones, and then you cut him. I don't know. I, that didn't make sense to me. But you never know what Belichick is thinking. You never know what he's doing. So always expect the unexpected like benching Malcolm Butler in the Super Bowl against the Eagles it cost to do the other championship but hey didn't expect that either so uh yeah it'll so, be uh it'll be good to see McCorkle under center there uh, I'm excited to see it they're still gonna lose week one though don't worry Miami's still gonna kick that ass you don't have uh, – we'll move on to this, but Stefan Gilmore starting on the pup list. So he'll be out the first six weeks. Sorry, Regan, that uh, Miami offense is coming. To uh, 400 yards, bold prediction right now. Three touchdowns, 400 yards. Oh, I got to throw, throw a lefty. Excuse me. There we go. Oh, there God. We go. Can anyone else play the fart noises or <laughs> – Yeah, can you, can you jump oh, in on that? Man. This is really – <laughs> who, who won last year, Mac? With Cam Newton? We just upgraded? Ooh. Just saying. All right, man. We'll see. He won 11 last year. Throwing it you out know, here. I think the, uh, I don't know. The Dolphins never seem to come out strong, and Mac's always pretty confident in how they're going to be. And they always, you know, lay an egg at least week one. So we'll see what happens. But I think for Cam Newton in the situation, uh, I think the best thing for him to do is just wait, wait for an injury. That's going to be his best chance to have an opportunity. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a team like the Texans try to jump in the mix, especially with Nick Casario being there. Obviously, he was a part of bringing in Cam in the first place, and he's a, he's a you know a Belichick uh, Belichickian guy. So. He's going to be a guy that's going to look for value. And if you can get him cheap enough, he's going to bring him in. He's probably going to give him an opportunity. So we'll see what happens there. But I just wanted to make a quick note here, guys, just talking about rookie quarterbacks and how successful they can be, especially in the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. So you got guys like Flacco, Roethlisberger, even Mark Sanchez all led their teams to uh, championship games their rookie season. Dak Prescott went 13-3. and three. Uh, Mahomes obviously wasn't a rookie when he played, but it was his, uh, his, in his first year, he won MVP offensive player of the year. And the common thread with all of these guys is that they the were drafted any one year championship, which is the most important part. Most but the important. common thread, the common thing with all these guys is that they were drafted to, to teams that were 
that were well managed and they were good. They had a lot of talent around them defensively on their, you know, with their offensive line, with their weapons. So with that said, a lot of these rookies go to shit teams. These guys went to good teams and had a lot of success. So I could see Mac Jones jumping right in. Great point about being on a good team. So different having some structure around you than going to the Jaguars and sucking. Right, Mac? Mm. Like that or uh, Burrow going to uh, oh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a better situation for, for him. So, yeah, I think that's enough on the Patriots, though. Should we move All on? Right. I want to do Let's my comparison, on. guys. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Real quick. So this was brought to my, uh, brought to my attention by a uh, listener, uh, Josh Wheeler. Shout out. Uh, just a, a quick thing. He wanted me to compare, or we could just talk about it, the 2001 Patriots when Tom Brady started and got to the Super Bowl and won uh, compared to Mac Jones this year, 2021. Uh, and some so Just saying. We weird, weird. Uh, no, but the, the whole comparison is the teams, the team structure, that is. Like you said, Matt, uh, Ryan, that the team, this is a good team. They both have, they both had very strong run games. They both have good defenses. 2001 might have been obviously a little bit better, but in general, nowadays, you don't even need a <laughs> good defense. You just need to have a great offense because you're just going to get called penalties on you. Anyways, uh, and they both seem to be game managers, uh, Tom Brady and Mac Jones, that is. They don't have – neither of them had crazy wide receivers. 2001, I had, I had my favorite player, Tom uh, – Troy Brown, that is, who was amazing. And then that was pretty much it. They had uh, – who was it? Uh, Antoine Dave, Smith was the running back. David Patton. Yeah, they Dave, it was only them. Then they had uh, Wiggy. Uh, Jermaine nice. Wiggins was their tight end. He had four touchdowns. It was like a it was like a nonchalant team. But at the same time, they were just a game manager – Moves it down the field, keeps the ball out of the uh, offense's hand, the other offense that is. Simple enough. So I'm, I'm kind of seeing this, you know, writing on the wall. I don't know about you guys. Mac, do you feel like there's any comparison here? You think it's just like people just getting excited? And th- please know that I'm not comparing Tom Brady to Mac Jones. There's no such thing. I wrote that in big letters in our docket. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying uh-huh. the, this, the similarity, you can't pass it up. You can't look, uh, look over it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. I mean, you got the you got uh, two tight ends though that are pretty pretty great tight ends, great and talented. You're it's a better team field. this time. All right, just checking. Not a better defense without Gilmore. That's for sure. That's true. you guys are gonna get exposed in the air. So week seven, we're gonna be freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, the Pats, not we. Yeah. Um, I- uh, Go ahead, yeah, I'm man. sorry, Ryan. I'm just saying I'm looking forward to the whole my marketing mind, just the whole hype to week four. Mac Jones <laughs> taking over for the Patriots and pay Brady coveted. It's gonna be great. Tickets went up another thousand dollars. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I can but- see a lot of similarities there with the two teams, especially how they're built. Like, you know, good old lines, uh decent running games. Defensively, it's not it, you know. Obviously, in 2001, we had a very strong linebacker core uh, with McGinnis and Brewski. Uh, I think Cox Ted might have been Johnson, on the team that right. year, Ted Johnson. And then your secondary, Ty Law, Lawyer Malloy. We have Stephen Gilmore, Devin McCourty, Matt Trudon, Kyle Van Noy, like, uh, Dante Jason Hightower. has got to step up now. So we got a pretty solid like linebacker core secondary. So I... we'll, we'll see what happens, but I'm not ready to say that you know it's 2001 yet. <laughs> what well, if see the comparisons well, Mac. I'm looking ahead but what if Mac Jones and the Patriots win when Brady comes up week four it's not going to be good for happen. his ego it's not going to be good God. Like, if that happens oh, I don't suicide watch for Brady I, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> good point. He gets, if he loses man overdoses on I don't, I don't know What's a better story? Brady coming back and beating the Patriots, or he comes back and loses to the rookie that basically has taken his spot a year later, year removed. But hey, I don't know. I don't think it could be wrong either way. More pressure on Tom. What What's a better story? Mac Jones wins the Super Bowl, or Mac Jones beats Tom Brady in Week Four? 
Uh, Mac Jones win uh, beats Tom Brady in Week Four. <laughs> Feel that way, right? Yeah, I kind of okay. want that more. <laughs> <Feel that. laughs> it's gonna be a watch more than the Super Bowl, I think. Could be. Oh, all right, good. boys. You want you want to yeah, move on? Yeah, we got to move this on. All right, so uh, Deshaun Watson trade movers; those were heating up again this week, just like they do every like three to four weeks. So the Panthers and the Dolphins are the front runners right now. Uh, but I also saw this, uh, some conflicting reports saying that he's going to kind of stay pat. Um, I kind of think that's what's going to happen, but Mac, what are you thinking? Yeah, uh, they're, they're not going to get the value that they, that they want for Watson. And, uh, it was heavy rumors, uh, for Tua to be traded to them, or they were even saying just picks and not Tua. Yeah, but Flores came out and said, "Now two is our quarterback. He endorsed him from the team. Like enough with these rumors." So I don't, I don't see anything happening with him. He's on, he's on the final roster though. I don't get why he's not on the exempt list. And just deal with this distraction. This, that's what this is. And I don't know what the NFL is doing. It's getting pretty annoying though. Just deal with it. Have the investigation. Find out what happened. Lay out punishments where are needed. So we can move on. Like, I don't get this whole sideshow that we're doing here. Can I ask you a follow-up question? Uh, Dynasty for Tua. What do you, what do you mm-hmm. think this does to his value? Do you think even if Deshaun ends up in Miami, does Tua end up somewhere else and, and likely starting? Yeah, I believe the only way they would get Watson is it trading Tua because Houston has nobody else. They would have to do that, and it would – it, it would plummet that he doesn't have the weapons in, in uh, Houston there. So, yeah, I was trying to buy him uh, in Dynasty, and I would I was willing to give a lot for him because of Miami's stack, and I thought they were building around him. I still think they are, but this year it's his prove-it year. So I'm trying to get out ahead of it. If you believe two is going to go off this year, get him in Dynasty. Two things on Watson, too, guys. So he had the, he has the no trade clause. So he denied a trade to the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that uh, makes me a little nervous about Hertz and how they feel about him. They did come out today. I saw on ESPN that they did announce him as the starter. I thought it was already established, but look like that news really just came out today, which means that they might have been really trying to get Watson. Um, and the second well, I thing, I don't oh, think good. we touched on it. Uh, we've been on since Minshew was traded there, so they, they had to come out and say, like, oh, yeah, Minshew doesn't know the playbook, so he's not starting. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. I bought, I got a lot of shares on Hertz as well, so that one makes me more nervous than Tua if I was a Tua owner. And as we know, the Eagles do like a nice, strong back, uh, uh, back yeah, quarterback do. like Foles, you know, like they had. Um, that being said, on, on Watson, I think the main target on this and what they're doing, Houston, that is, is going to let him sit on the on the team. And once his name clears, his value is going to skyrocket. He's gonna they're gonna get whatever they want from any any team. Obviously, if it doesn't go well and all this stuff, all these rumors are true and so on, then it might screw them over. But it's probably the same value that they're kind of getting now. So if they can hold out, sadly, I think you guys said he, he gets paid $10 million just being on the team now, mm-hmm. which is tough. So they have to kind of eat that. But it's not like they haven't made room getting rid of everyone under the sun. So if they can keep them, name gets cleared or whatever, or it gets past this, they're going to get astronomical offers. So just a thought. Yeah. And they don't care about winning this year. So they'll, no. they'll, they'll keep them. And I don't see Casario, of all people, I don't see him like – pulling the trigger quickly just to get the guy out of town. He's going to wait for the right deal. And if he doesn't get the right deal, he's not going to do anything. Nope. No, he won't. And, uh, All right. yeah. Speaking of Philly there, look at this guy, Jordan Howard drop <laughs> released by the Eagles there. And we had John Brown and, uh, on the Raiders there, he was not doing anything in camp. I don't know if he's always hurt and stuff and they released him, but he requested a trade and they he requested it. a trade and, they traded him or come? No, they he request. Oh wait, he requ- requested request a release. Re- yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. I know we were just talking about trades. It's all good. Yeah, and I'm like, he was a pretty good flex player, streaming option. Mm-hmm. I'm like wondering what team he'll go to. And then 
Des Fitzpatrick for Tennessee. He was one of my third round picks in the rookie draft, and he was released by Tennessee. And Julio Jones and AJ Brown are back practicing and stuff, so they must be looking good. They don't need that wide receiver depth. So, can I just comment on that real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so the G- the GM for the Titans, uh, I think his name is John Robinson. Uh, so he he drafts Isaiah Wilson, who was an offensive tackle last year in the first round. And the guy plays like three snaps and then he gets traded to the Dolphins. And now he like retired this year. So that was his first round pick last year. And this year he trades up in the draft. I know it's the fourth round, but he trades up in the fourth round to grab Des Fitzpatrick, giving away other draft capital. And then he well, cuts like fourth they, in the fourth round, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. And then, yeah. and then he, and then they cut Fitzpatrick before the season starts. Like, not a not a good track record for for this guy, especially oh. with those two guys. Like you didn't get anything out of them. Yeah. So. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. <laughs> Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mister General Manager of the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just wanted to play that drop. It's been a while. Uh, what else we got in the news here? Uh, yeah, so a couple more releases. Uh, Jalen Samuels, the running back from Pittsburgh. I think that just kind of puts the nail in the coffin that Najee Harris is the main guy, and he's going to be mm-hmm. involved in this offense. And he's really one of the only backs that's not in a running back by committee in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, there aren't a lot out there. So he was released. Uh, Wayne Gallman from the 49ers was released, which – is a little surprising to me. It isn't. It isn't like I know they have a million running backs, but Wayne Gallman is a real is a pretty good running back, and I'm surprised that he keeps having like this like journeyman career mm-hmm. a little bit. So we'll we'll see what happens there. I think that he's an interesting guy to keep keep an eye on to to stash away in a, like a dynasty or a deep bench league. Uh, and then Antonio Gandy Golden from the Washington Football Team was waived in his second year. And I know that there was a lot of hype around him last year. So mm-hmm. what do you guys, what's, what's out of all those names, those three names, like who stands out to you the most? Uh, yeah. The Wayne Gallman one, especially uh, Jeff Wilson's on the pup list too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had that early off season injury. They must really trust their rookies there. Trey Sermon and uh, Elijah Mitchell. So yeah, I, if you are a deep bench in dynasty, and one of well, Trey Sermon won't be, but Elijah Mitchell might be out there. Uh, somebody making drops. Check your waiver wire. See if you can grab him because if they're not like Wade Gallman. Yeah, he definitely lost the the uh, rotation position he had. We got also Regan. Get, they also get injured injured a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> Elijah true. Mitchell could be the starter week three. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, it's good. I think Samuels is my most interesting one because just uh, what just helps me <laughs> determine that I really like Najee Harris and I love his upside <laughs> and I think he's going to be awesome. <laughs> so that's about it. I still think he's going to have a hard time running the football, but just it does seem like he's going to be more involved in the passing game than than I initially expected him to be. I'm just sure. So don't worry, buddy. You'll see it coming. <laughs> All right, what about your boy over here? Oh, oh no. I don't even know about this. You know what? Every time I bring up a guy in a in a podcast episode, and I'm like overly confident about him, within 24 hours, that guy is is injured or having oh. surgery or something. Come on, Paris Campbell is still out there. He's fine. he's holding on. He is holding on. It's only because I bought his merch. So <laughs> that's why. That's why he wearing his jersey right now. I am right now just to try to like keep any good luck his way, you know? Uh, So, so (laughs) Irv, Irv Smith, my tight end six, uh, goes down with an injury. Uh, Remind me of what he hurt. I couldn't even Um, look at the news. Meniscus injury. So what I was uh, reading up on is, is two different types of surgeries he could have. I, Sorry, I'm slurring my words there. I still have not drank in a drop of alcohol today, so excuse me. <laughs> but yeah, if he gets it removed, he'll be back sooner rather than later, four to six weeks to that. If it's repaired, his season will be done. It'll be a much longer uh, recovery. So 
that's why, spoiler alert, they traded for Chris Herndon. I don't think you mentioned that, did you? And I think he probably will get him repaired, and I just don't think he's gonna. they're going to shut him down this season. They could just remove the meniscus and just call it a day. It like, is, I not, either. <laughs> um, I'm not a doctor. I played it one time because she made me. But it was – Speaking's awful. mom? Yeah, yeah. Dude, no. You can't be in on it too. <laughs> she did. She That's did. messed up. Uh, <laughs> Throwing a stick in Campbell's legs. <laughs> she made me whip out my stethoscope. Oh, did somebody say Regan's mom was napping and it woke me up? I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, I guess she listens anyway, to you guys, right? Anyway, I'll have to do more research on it, but uh, there's just some news I was uh, reading about during all these cuts, so we'll get back to you on that. Please don't. Like, hashtag not a doctor. Are we, uh, how do we feel about Chris Herndon? Uh, no, I'll say it. I'm fine with a you know like a shot on him if he's going to be the only tight end there. I may he's not right. Isn't there Conklin there? Conklin, yeah, is right. yep. Conklin. Yeah. yeah. So actually, that probably is what I would do. It's the guy you deeper, want. Deeper, deeper bench. Already knows Keep the system. Keep an eye on Conklin. Knows the system. Yep. Yeah. Good call, Mac. We'll see. Adam Thielen. Maybe More yeah, touchdowns. he does have double digit touchdowns in you him this know. year. You know, we were discussing that if Earl Smith 11. was taken away, yeah, he might. He's not getting double digits. We'll he's getting a little more. Eleven. We'll give him one more. I'll give him nine. I'll give him nine touchdowns. <laughs> Justin nine. Jefferson, seventeen. Hope so. Or that Dalvin would Cook. Be something. You know, this this reminds me, and we should get into it later. But right now, is it a bad thing that I have Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson on my dynasty team? Should I trade Dalvin Cook? Because people are like, oh, having the same player on the same team, you got to share the points. I'm like, it's a receiver and running back, though, and they do well. Gonna yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I don't very, agree with that either. Very different players who can rack up points in very different ways. Two wide receivers, then I get it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. you should get rid of Dalvin Cook anyways. I, I need a haul, though. I'm looking, if I trade really? him, I need three first-round picks, <laughs> so... There you go. If those guys are listening, send me some offers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm in the running for the championship. Oh, well, then you just – Before week one there. even starts. No, I'm just kidding. I ended right. up with uh, – we'll talk about it later. But I ended up with another yeah, we'll pairing that. That, I'll, that I'll discuss. But, uh, yeah, so Saquon Barkley. Uh, guys, is he in or out week one? What are you hearing? Briggs, what do you got? So they came out today saying that they are not going to say anything until after next week, which is tough because if you have a fantasy league and you waited, I know we all try to wait as long as possible, but if you were one of those uh, groups that got to wait, you know, until the week of, you still might not know if Saquon Barkley should be a first round pick. And that is tough because if he doesn't play week one, that's literally just one whole week gone out of the season, which in the long run, it's probably not that big of a deal, but it does make me nervous that he might not be ready yet. <laughs> yep. Uh, second round Saquon there, man. I did not want to risk a first round pick on him. In the second, I would do it, but yeah. Uh, I, I bet you he's not playing week one. And their O-line just looks terrible. And they had a they had like 10 O-line cut. <laughs> it was ridiculous, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know we what they're going to do. We also don't have it on here, but Mark Ingram's also hurt, and they are not saying if he's going to be able to play week one. Not Mark Ingram, uh, Evan Ingram. Oh, Evan Ingram. Ingram. I did. Yeah, I'm sorry. I meant to make a note of that. Yeah, he might not even suit up uh, week one. Lovely. Gotta I love think if job. Barkley suits up, he's probably not playing You know, at full capacity. I, you know, even throughout the season, if they have a terrible O line, probably the same thing as Najee. Like, again, one of the only guys that doesn't have a ton of competition behind him. It's not going to be a running back by committee. So he's going to get plenty of work in the passing game. But he's he's got to get back on the field. I did see something today. Um, so the Giants cut Corey Clement, who had a decent preseason. He was averaging, uh, he averaged over six yards a carry in two preseason games, and he led the team in rushing throughout the preseason. 
So they re- they released him, which he was if Saquon was out, he was probably in line to be RB two behind Booker. Yeah. Okay. So they're saying that maybe that's a sign that Barkley comes back week one, and that or that they're confident that he's coming back early because it's clearly Barkley and Booker, and if they have those two and they're healthy, you know they mm-hmm. they'll feel confident with that. So, like you said, Reeks, we're gonna have to wait and see. And if you uh, you know you tried to wait for the for your drafts, it's not gonna matter. They could be getting Wayne Gallman back. He's free. Yeah, true. Sure. And he knows the system. <laughs> he knows the system. <laughs> Just saying. Mm, oh, man. Man. So ne- next, guys, is the uh, what I wrote as the dreaded pub list. Oof. And this one, this one's tough, and, and it also sucks. <laughs> so as we already as we already uh, said, Stefan Gilmore is going on the pub list. Won't be back for six weeks. Uh, a couple other big ones though that are on the pub list now is uh, Packers All Pro li- uh, left tackle David uh, Becatara. We'll go with that. But that yeah. is yeah, already back at back Atari, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of letters. <laughs> uh, I call him no, Baka. Never, I was gonna say, what's his name from Mortal Kombat? Baraka, the guy with a sword. Obama? I don't know. Uh, Moving sorry. on, Baraka, <laughs> and he has the Nerd. teeth and everything. Yeah, I know. Anyway, somebody help me out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Leave a comment if you know who I'm talking about. So, anyways, that's that's a huge hit for um, Green Bay, for Aaron Rodgers, for Aaron Jones. He's not going to be there to, for six weeks. That's tough. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, no, that's a huge one. And uh, the next one's Bears running back Tariq Cohen, which I think we all kind of mm-hmm. were worried about this in general, and we all planned accordingly. I don't think I think I grabbed them in one league, but it was one of those ones where I just picked them up and threw them on my IR and see what happens. Uh, lastly, Michael Thomas. And this one, guys, I, I got caught in the trap. I got caught in the trap, and I drafted Michael Thomas in way too many leagues, and I should not have done it. In my head, I'm thinking, all right, like it was reported, he's probably going to be out till week three. He's going to come in. He's got Jameis Winston. He's going to kill it. Jameis Winston's going to go throw 30 touchdowns, 30 picks, but 5,000 yards. Michael Thomas will have half of that. <laughs> you know, then we'll be good. Uh, that's not going to happen. He is now on the pup list. You will not have him for for first six weeks. You uh, might have screwed yourself because he was going pretty early, uh, like I did. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> yeah, Old man. Strategy. Uh, I did not. I did not. Uh, yeah, I was going to do that too. Um, yeah, I did not get Michael Thomas in any drafts. I, I figured it would he would be on the pup list. I really just didn't want that. And my strategy will be I'll wait for the guy who owns them, so I'll be sliding into your DMs, Regan. Once I'm killing it at the beginning of the season and again, I know I keep yeah, I know. I keep on so Don't wrong. say it. Don't, <laughs> okay. Don't anyway. say it. <laughs> it's gonna be really weird. You know where I was going. Anyway, yeah, yeah I would be like uh stop right Next. There. Uh, anyway, I will be trading for Michael Thomas when I'm killing it, and then I'm going to want him for the home stretch, and you are desperate for a win. So cool, be ready. I will trade you Curtis Samuel for Michael Thomas. <laughs> you better get to me before week five. You're going to have to get. You're going to have to trade for him around like week four, week five. They have a bye week, week seven, and uh, so he's not going to be there for so. week eight. Yeah, so he won't be Oof. there until week eight, maybe, because they still have to get him game speed. That's just when he's eligible to come back and make sure that yeah. he's good. So he's coming back from surgery. So. That week. Yeah. Speaking of the Saints, too, uh, Hurricane, what is it, Ida, yeah. down there, they might not have a home game until week eight as well. They're trying to rearrange the schedule and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, prayers for the uh, people down there in uh, New Orleans and down the Gulf because that's a uh, – a really bad situation and uh yeah i hope they're all right then they're gonna be on the road away from their family stuff it, it's gonna be tough so uh that keep is, that in mind as well like, just the grind like that, of the uh, season yeah the katrina season very much yeah. the same. yeah was it uh the texans were away for a bit too right yeah i think so so yeah it's rough we'll have to see what happens and what effect that has on James Winston and the team, and, mm-hmm. and they'll, they'll win the Super Bowl next year. Then, 
that's what they did after the, yeah. the other one. Uh, Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. All right. Anything Anything else for the uh, briefs here, guys? Or we, I do uh, want to say. On enough? No, we did not. Go ahead. <laughs> I did trade Michael Thomas for Mike Evans and Jerry Judy last year. And then I flipped Jerry Judy this year for Cooper Cup. So essentially I got Mike Evans and Cooper Cup for Michael Thomas. So feel good about that. Too much. You, you traded Jerry Judy for Cooper Cup straight up? Yep. Really? Balls. I know. Bold strategy, Cotton. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if it pans out for him. <laughs> Judy can Matt Stafford, good. baby. <laughs> Matt Stafford. Hey. All right. My boy, Blue. Why is there no ice in my lemonade? <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's move on, and I'm going to stop saying all right. Hey, Matthew McConaughey right, here. <laughs> let's move on to our – extended version of the leftovers if you guys listen to the end of our episodes we get into a little extra thoughts that we call the leftovers and it could be anything it could be a boat or right now we're just going to talk some reflections a family guy reference there regan for you um so like look a confused. <laughs> <laughs> I know. My, my head hurts a lot <laughs> you might know what shows i watch a lot of uh <laughs> so I need to correct myself uh, from last episode. I was an ass. Rare occurrence. I made a mistake. I know. I know. Shocker. Uh, everyone makes the mistakes, like Regan's mom having Regan. Uh, I was the mistake. I mentioned. <laughs> <That's messed up. laughs> I mentioned that our league mate, our friend John Connolly, stole Corey Davis from me. That was a different league. He stole plenty of other players, though. So technically. Kind of right. He did snipe Jamal Williams and Amon Ross St. Brown from me, but it wasn't Corey Davis. So, for that, I apologize. But let's move on and we reflect to um, our past draft together that we've been in for a long time. I think it was our longest standing draft, uh, League of Extraordinary Men, that we're all a part of. I'm proud of the way I drafted. All right, I was at the fifth spot. I got Kamara. I wasn't expecting to get him. Uh, now I was hoping for Chubb on the way back. Uh, even a PPR, I think he's going to score high. But uh, any takeaways from that draft for you guys? Or oh, I don't know. This is Ryan's draft, so I'll let him go first. I, uh, you know, this wasn't the, this wasn't the case. Draft results. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't the yeah. case in all, in all of my leagues is I have many shares of JK Dobbins, but this happened to be the one league that it worked out for me. Uh, and I don't want something to work out off of an injury, but I did not draft a second running back, uh, until very late. And then I just kind of scrambled for a bunch of guys and, uh, thought something like this might happen. And Gus Edwards was one of those guys. So now I have, you know, a solidified starting running back in my running back two slot. And, uh, Pretty loaded up with, with receivers with Keenan Allen and A.J. Brown and Deontay Johnson. And I got T.J. Hawkinson. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this league. Mm-hmm. And not to mention Christian McCaffrey, number one. I was going to say, you drafted first spot, so you got him. Mm-hmm. I got oh, a good funny for story you. for that later. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Regan? Yeah, so I think with this one, I, I actually pointed it out the other day when we were on that I was kind of like, pretty butthurt about this league and I felt like I did kind of crappy but I think after looking back at it it's because you know I took Max point of view and I drafted Travis Kelsey seventh overall and I was like whew that might have been a bad idea but you know you know I grabbed Kelsey at seven and that's because I was actually really high on Devontae Adams right there and he went with the pick before me wasn't too keen on uh, Aaron Jones or Tyreek Hill so I grabbed Kelsey and it came back around and I got uh, Najee Harris, and then the third round, I got uh, Allen Robinson, who I both think both those players can be top 10 players. So uh, that makes me feel pretty good about uh, how I made out. And from there, my team is just awesome. So I think I was just nervous about Travis Kelsey being my seventh. I was like, Allen Robinson's my number one. I got Julio, which I could obviously backfire. <laughs> yeah. It could, but yeah, it's it's foreign, huh? Taking a tight end in the first round, so it you're was not used really to it. Yeah, such a good. Used, shot. I don't have the drop set up. Damn it! 
Uh, it, I, is a I, bold, it is a bold strategy. Ah, you know, you yeah. keep setting me up, and I just keep going. I can just, can just go do there. this. What's up, guys? <laughs> I did get – you know what really bummed me out, though, is I took Travis Kelsey first in this one, and then, like, three days later, I got Travis Kelsey in the second round when I was pick nine. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> I was like, I could have waited. <laughs> Probably not, but – no, no, that league I got excited. Know. Yeah, that one, that one I did good. I got Kamara, Justin Jefferson, the second round. Then I got Joe Mixon on the way back. Fair so enough. that's my only share of Joe Mixon. Hopefully he does well. Third then I got round Gaskin to fill in in the third round. If yeah, I was picking fifth, so we'll see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so I did get Corey Davis in that one, but Jalen Hurts is my quarterback, so I'm a little nervous there. Who's mine? And I'm uh, taking some shots on some rookie wide receivers, Elijah Moore, Rondell Moore. Uh, just give me, give me some more. And it's no, oh my god! All right, my board's not working. Dang it, guys! Good. Sorry. Yeah, you uh, don't like the board, huh? Okay. No, well, you the comments. Against me. You like the board, or you don't? Yeah, well, obviously, because I'm controlling it. You can control it. I'll get my if own you board. Would like. Are, who are the players that you guys wish you have you had more shares of? McCaffrey. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> like, like later round. Uh, the one, the ones that I could grab. Um, AJ Brown, I have none of, and I don't like that at all. I just could. It was either too early or just too late on him, and I really think he's going to do really well this year, and I'm afraid I'm going to miss out on it. So I don't want to say I'm wrong, or I hope I'm wrong, because I want to be right, but I'll be going against him. <laughs> so, hope yeah. you're right, big guy. Hope you're right. I hope I hope I'm right for your sake as well. How about you, Regan? Uh, probably say I. Not that I missed out because I got both of them, but I um I had a hard time between Keaton Allen and Allen Robinson. That third round, when I had that opportunity, I just didn't know. E- either they went right before me, so I couldn't get them, or I had to make a decision on the two. And most of the time, I went Allen Robinson. You guys think I made the right decision? I I just kept putting it in perspective. I know Keenan Allen's a hell of a player. I think they do have a harder schedule down the line. And with Allen Robinson, Andy Dalton needing to make a name for himself, he's going to pepper him with targets and then – uh, Justin Fields, I'm expecting to just go to the number one receiver as many times as possible, just like you know, Kyler Murray does with Hopkins or something like that. So, uh, no, I, I kind of like Allen Robinson better this year, uh, especially if you're going to take a late uh, pick with Justin Fields and you want to stack it later on in the season. If that would be your strategy, like I did that with Brandon Ayuk, hoping that he stays healthy, and then I took Trey Lance. Uh, so hopefully that will be a stack later on in the season, playing Ooh. a little bit of a long game. But I mean, just little things like that, that could be an advantage, and it's worth a shot later on. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, at the top of the draft, you're going to go with the ones that you like throughout the season, no matter who's throwing the ball to them. And Allen Robinson has proven with crappy quarterbacks that he's productive. Boys, so. Top 12. Yeah. Quick note, yeah. though, Trey Lance chipped bone in his finger. We did not put that in the news. Yeah, he is out for at least a week, right? Yeah, at least a week. That's kind of a weird injury, though. That could kind of linger. I don't expect him to start, like we said, until like a week four, I'm thinking. Hopefully. They did talk about doing like a uh, duo thing where it would kind of just be Jimmy Garoppolo plays a little bit and Trey Lance plays a little bit. That came out. It was. That's what she said. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) What a night, huh? (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, I'd be horrified if that happens for fantasy, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, man. Um, yeah, so I got a – I don't know, Ryan, do you have anything else on that? Or are you good? No, I'd say, I'd say the one guy I wish I had more shares of uh, right now is Jerry Judy. Wish yeah, I, I trade him, him at all. for Cooper no. Cup. I do love Cooper Cup, though. I'm not going to I'm not gonna feel bad about that. I'm just no. not. No. I would. I would. He's looking good, and hopefully they can punch it in the end zone with him. Uh, But, yeah, I I don't have any shares of Jerry Judy. So, yeah, I concur with that. We also didn't know Teddy Bridgewater was going to be the quarterback for half our drafts. That's what Mm -hmm. killed us. 
Yes, yeah, we draft too early. But it's hard mm-hmm. when you, people are from out of state and you have to get on the same schedule and you got to do what you got to do. Uh-huh. So and you don't want to do online like some loser staying in your office or in your basement on the computer with your friends. Freaking weirdos. Oh, <laughs> the <Someone's irony>. hurt. <laughs> uh, anyway, I have a question for you guys. So I started a new draft with some people. And it's PPR format, bunch of bonus points, and just going to be ridiculous. But one QB, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, two flexes. This kid, Nick, in his first pick overall, took Travis Kelsey. Oof. Yeah. I told Wait, him first I pick? Shout out. It, well, not first pick overall, I'm sorry. First pick, of, uh, he was eighth. Oh, all right. Took Travis Kelsey. And then he took a receiver, or yeah, he went he went no running back, so he took a receiver. And then on the way back, he took Waller. And I'm like, you automatically have to put him in the flex, but since you have two flexes, that's a good strategy, huh? Secure those top tier tight ends, and uh, you automatically have to start them every time. But you pretty much would, I guess, to use a flex point. But so, I was like, yeah, I usually don't with one flex, but. Would you guys have done that? But then you miss out on running backs. He's hurting at running backs. Let me bring up his team. But go ahead. Let me know what you think. Didn't Chris do that, Ryan, in your league? Chris Pixoto. Wasn't that like a oh, Jimmy gosh, Graham, was, Gronk? Jimmy Graham and Gronk, yeah. Yeah. Remember that. Bro, you're going way back, dude. He hasn't been in the I league in like say, six I, years. But I hate that memory, I remember dude. that. I have weird, <laughs> weird things pop in my head, man. How did it work out for him? Did he win? I don't remember. That's where we have to go back and find out. Uh, so, all right. I apologize. He took Kelsey, then Antonio Gibson, and then uh, Waller, which I don't okay. know why none of us grabbed Waller before he could because we should have seen it coming. Well, you probably didn't think he was going to get him. Damn. Yeah. And his That's wide receiver is Brandon Cooks, is wide receiver one. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Wide receiver wide, one is Darren Waller. wide receiver two. Yeah, true. Uh, Jerry Judy. <laughs> Then he, Corey he, Davis. And oh, have one. <laughs> He's got some good value at receiver, though. That's I yeah. don't hate it. Yeah. I don't. Hate I don't it. hate it either. I I really don't. But high volume uh, receivers with Waller and Kelsey and Antonio Gibson. It's a fun. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Oh my god! To- <laughs> it only took four times. <laughs> you need to buy him this T-shirt. <laughs> you should. Oh man. If he wins, uh, I'll buy him a t-shirt. Who's playing quarterback for him, uh, George Kittle? Stafford. That's okay. Kittle. Dude, he's going to win. Are you kidding he's me? He's not going to win. He's got the two best league. tight ends I'm and gonna... one of the best quarterback. Oh, come on. One of the best quarterbacks? What do you have him right Of all time, of course. Of all time? Stafford is one of the best of all time. Quarterback 15 well, this season, but one wise. of the best of all time. He's got the most injuries. <laughs> playing through injuries, is that uh, a record? Mm-hmm. I have Kyler Murray, Aaron Jones, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Justin Jefferson, Chris Godwin, Mike Kosicki, and Curtis Sammy and Juju in my flex. And I have pretty good uh, bench. Gan taking shots on rookies, so flexing uh, on his home team, whatever. I'm just saying what that's what I'm competing with. So I wish I had. I should have taken Waller. Should have taken Waller in like the yeah, second that's round. That's tough. Instead of Jefferson, though, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, guys, I want to tell you my best draft. Yeah, let's go. And it was literally the one we've all talked about, and it's that keeper league where I was freaking out yes. about James Robinson and uh, Henderson, and who do I keep? I ended up keeping Keenan Allen in the fourth, James Robinson in the ninth, and Jalen Hurts in the tenth. So know that this is a super flex league, so you can play two QBs, and then there's also two additional flexes. So there's three flexes necessarily. It's only a 10 team, so that's why you, you have so much room. Right. But I, I honestly thought it was just going to be a rebuild for me. I ended up getting first pick. I've won the past two seasons. After looking at my team, I'm like, oh, right. yeah, I'm going back to back to back. This is going to be awesome. I literally went all out on the keepers, too, and just got crazy rookies. I got Pitts uh, fifth, uh, Damien Harris, oh, Biggest steal right here, guys. Two QB league. I drafted uh, Justin Fields and Trey Lance back to back in the twelfth and thirteenth round. 
that's who I'm keeping. I was like, this is a no brainer. And then I even got Trey Sermon in the 14th. It was just glorious. I am so pumped. It's I got him. I got him. Right kid. Yeah. Don't get penisy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. The one thing I do want to say as a note, guys, is uh, so I grabbed uh, Kyle Pitts. And on the turns, uh, especially obviously 1 and 12, but you could always do it between 2nd and uh, 11th as well, especially with the Keeper League where the picks matter. Strategically place or pick your players in the correct order. So I got on turn, I got Chris Godwin 4th and Kyle Pitts the 5th. I could have flipped that. But in my Keeper League, the draft uh, position matters. So next year they actually move up one spot. A lot of uh, a lot of leagues do that, or they'll just stay in the same spot. So I'm going to get Kyle Pitts in the fi- uh, fourth round next year instead of a third if I had placed him in my fourth spot. So just pay attention to where you put in your stickers. It could really benefit you. I usually always put high upside or rookies lower as possible. Something to keep in mind. I had only won the past few years because I got – Patch him homes in the seventh round. And it's been awesome. <laughs> so uh, that is pretty sweet. Not to toot my own horn and say I'm gonna go back to back to back. To back. <laughs> <laughs> but I might. <laughs> Alright, Ryan. That's what she said. <laughs> you got any good? How can you do a back to back? That's weird. <laughs> I don't know. That's impressive, actually. <laughs> Thinking about it. <laughs> God damn. Good for you. <laughs> uh all right, you have the floor. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so my my favorite draft was the one that I did with you guys, our first team uh-huh. draft in the As session takeover us. two tournament. And i i just want to I just want to recap the the wide receiver core that we have here in a two quarterback, two flex, three receiver league. Our receivers are Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Calvin Ridley. Tyler Lockett, Michael Thomas. It's a beautiful thing, guys. Dude, Michael Thomas, Not... get him back. Week seven. Eight. Yep. Oh. Hey, we can wait for him now. We can wait for him. And we got Kyler Murray as our quarterback one. And our running backs aren't terrible. Jacobs, Hunt. You know, I won't mention the guys on the bench. But good call. <laughs> projected to score the second most points week one. So I think we're in good shape. That's oh, good, man. Calvin mm-hmm. That is good. Devontae. That's actually somebody I had did not get a lot of was Calvin Ridley. I he was going yeah, so early. I only got him years. once. Yeah, I only got him once uh, out of my eight leagues or whatever I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. so close. One draft. Yeah, right. pick before me. I did get Kyle Pitts in this draft though. One of my, one of my favorites that I just did Sunday night, or best draft I did. I think I had second pick overall. The guy ahead of me, it must have been. Kyle and Recarnate, he took Derrick Henry. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> it took McCaffrey. Uh, but then there was somebody, I don't want to name names. He's probably not listening anyway. I don't really care. But he, it was his Harry first really time good. ever playing. And he's a Chiefs fan, so he's taking all Chiefs players. He took Hill, Clyde, then he took Pringle, and then he took Kareem Hunt. And I'm just like trying to help him out. He asked for my advice. I gave him my advice. And they ignored it. I'm like, okay, okay, good luck. Thanks for the hundred dollar donation. I guess, but hundred bucks. What yeah. round did he draft Byron Pringle? Third round. He's the tenth any, pick. Any so round is he, too he's early. Ten spot, and then he did. So he did. Yeah, Hill, Clyde, then Pringle, then Hunt. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and he did. Byron get Pringle in the third round. He only knew his team. He's never played oh, before. You know, but it, 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 I feel bad. Like he's thrown into it. He's just trying to fill in because somebody had to back out. And it's just like, oh, that, that's like no time to do any homework. He didn't know what he was doing. Remember your first time? It was rough. I won my first time. Yeah, my first time of dating myself. But I think I took Ronnie Brown in the first round. <laughs> my first I- year. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. Lamont, I took Lamont Jordan in the first round one time. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't beat Byron Pringle. Byron Pringle is heavily <laughs> drafted in in all formats, and yeah. he's picked in the third yes. round. So I will. I haven't made that big of a mistake. At least I like to think so. I just want to say, <laughs> my first that. draft, my stepdad invited me to join. All his buddies at the golf course had a league that they've been doing for years. I came in the first year, and I had first pick. I was pumped. I grabbed uh, Chris Johnson. 
and I grabbed who was it? Uh, LaShawn McCoy's rookie year, and I just demolished everyone. It was ridiculous, and I won like a nice. lot of money. I said that was pissed. <laughs> I bet he, I bet he was. But yeah, so do you guys feel bad for people like that first time drafting, or do you like all right, easy competition? I'm good. No, what you do is you send them a link to our YouTube I, I tried. or or all the other hat. places. He's drinking out of koozie, looking like a big, I don't know, douche. Should have, I guess. Should have fed him some <laughs> swag <laughs> off it. <laughs> And I kept on uh, dropping uh, plugs. Uh, some of the guys do listen there, uh, so I appreciate their support. Uh, so yeah, I don't know this guy. I just I felt bad. <laughs> I mean, I don't feel bad if he's asking for tips and then he's ignoring them and drafting Byron Pringle in the third round. So yeah, you know. Then he drafted guys that weren't on teams too, and we had to like help him out with that. I got oh, two yeah. final things, guys. Did you see the one one? Uh, catch that Kyle Pitts made because you brought up Kyle Pitts, Mac. Mm-hmm. It was like it was like a dump. Yeah, pass. I got him in the I got him in like the sixth round. So yeah. on the turn on the turn. So that was my only share of him. So I'm pretty excited. At that one, the one play he got during preseason, it gave him the ball. It was uh, he actually pulled Mac from the weak side, oh, from the strong side across, and they gave gave him a dump pass. So he's literally two yards over the line of scrimmage. And then he ran for like 38 yards, and it took eight mm. people to tackle him, including yeah. linemen jumping on top oh, yeah. of him because he's so big. I'm telling you, he's breaking the record. Oh, it's he's going to he's, he's gonna break pumped. the record. Um, uh, and the last Evan thing. Ingrams. Yes, go ahead. The last thing is I just wanted to ask uh, producer Kyle, PK, if he had anything you want to talk about with his leagues. He might be sleeping, yeah. guys. How many shares of Waller do you have and Henry Ruggs? And Josh Jacobs. Oh, my and Josh God. Josh Jacobs. Oh, and Derek Hart. Don't you know, with Janikowski. You know, if you want to wake me up, you have to say Matt's mom. That's rule number one. <laughs> Noted. I, I did get Darren Waller. Mm. I'm only in one league right now. I'm actually doing another league this week, I think. So, I uh, I did get Darren Waller in the second round. Um, went Henry third overall. Uh, I don't think I have any other Raiders besides that. So. If Janikowski was still in the league, I'd have him, but he's not, so I don't know what to do with that. But uh, <laughs> he's I did, just not having a kicker. There's no kicker, empty. I'm just like, gonna nobody's say, worth it. I'm just gonna say that I did tell you James Robinson and uh, Gus Edwards Oof. was my sleeper, and guess what? Mm-hmm. What's up? Remember that? It's more like oh, Gus he... what? <laughs> Gus what? <laughs> Gus bus. <laughs> Yeah, no, good calls, good calls, man. I don't have any James Robinson either. Uh, people got took him, him too early for me. You got him in the keeper. No, that's yeah. good. That's good. Uh, all right. Anybody have anything else in reflection period on our drafts? Nope. I had fun on this one. That was a good just being yeah. excited about fantasy. Everybody should be in the same boat. Drafts, I know, mm-hmm. are the funnest, but now here comes the somewhat, you know, you gotta calculate yeah. your next couple moves, guys. I know there was a lot of like when Sony Michelle moved. I saw just <laughs> updates on my phone popping through all my leagues, or mm-hmm. you know, when Cam got dropped, you know, Mac Jones got picked up in all my leagues. So just play, yeah. it, play it smooth. It's still early. I gotta remind myself to turn my notifications back on for, uh, <laughs> for certain alerts. Uh, but yeah, you guys should turn on your alerts too to check us out on. Just a tip, FFP. We'll Hit be that updating button. you on injuries, big news like Cam Newton today. Uh, the biggest headline, yeah, we uh, posted that. So if you want to give us a follow, you can follow ESPN if you want, but they're boring. You know you want our tips instead. The original. Everybody's doing that. Hmm. All right. Uh, you guys got anything for leftovers after dark? Anything else? Uh, I guess I can go first. I love Ryan, the title. <laughs> the f- extra leftovers you go at midnight you go to the fridge you're just like all right this should be heated up but it, i'll make too much noise and you start eating them away i wish we had I'm leftovers in this. My <laughs> i'm gonna do that i still haven't eaten dinner so i'm still gonna do that after this oh my <laughs> god 10 30 at night not a good idea but uh yeah anybody ever watch uh c on uh apple tv jason momoa dave batista it's like a dystopian society, futuristic. They all go blind. 
and stuff. I don't know. It looked pretty cool. I saw the trailer for like season two, and I'm like, I haven't seen any of this. Pun intended. But uh, they just did there. Looks pretty cool, like Vikings, but futuristic, and they're blind fighting each other. It looks pretty ridiculous, but I want to check it out. I did see that trailer multiple times when I was watching Smickadoon, the newest musical on Apple TV. It's fantastic. You guys should, you guys should go check it out. Really we just, me not to throw my <laughs> yeah, we just lost so many followers. Wow. Wow. Right, Kyle, uh, Kyle, looks like we have an opening here. Uh, <laughs> want to step in. We can... We're over an hour here. I know, you know nobody's listening. Just, yeah, I should probably cut the video. It's got uh, <laughs> Keegan Michael Key and uh, Cecily like Strong. It's a musical, right? Yeah, Martin it's Short's a, in it like a for a brief moment. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like a comedy musical. Check it out. Just make a dude. Uh, also, the dude. Raiders kicker is uh, Daniel Carlson for anybody that's, that would like to know. Oh, I did draft him. Sorry. I did draft two Raiders. <laughs> uh, I am did. not worthy. I knew it. Oh, what worthy. Was... Ryan, what was the name of that show? Schmickadoon. Oh, all right. Sorry. No, I was thinking of something else, some sort of move that Regan Moms does, but something different. A lot. You had to drop and you fucked up again. <laughs> uh, nope, I didn't. Oh, I said the F word. Now we have to mark this. Uh, explicit. Damn it. Sorry, guys. Son of a bitch. That's what you get talking about my mom, you asswipe. <laughs> uh, He's a nice more. lady. First, take a big step Aww. back and literally fuck your own face! <laughs> Just you well. gotta get him in while you can, man. You gotta get <laughs> no, him in. I open up the floodgates, buddy. I, I don't have that's what she said. Drop set up. Ah, forget it. It's late. Good night, right. everybody. Good night, everyone. What was it? Schmickerdoodle? Uh, oh, that's what I wanted to see. What is it? Carlson's on COVID 19. Am I never watching? Kyle. Just gonna make sure to block that. It was, uh, I, I had a hard time with the name, too, myself, first couple of times. Well, Dak, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence.